Well, Jeremy, let's go back to the, to the start of your hockey life. Do you remember much about your first skates, your first skating experiences? Uh, not my first pair of skates. Um, probably hand-me-downs. My brother played uh, hockey. But uh, I do remember going in, there was something in Bayfield. There was a small little rink. Uh, I'm from rural Ontario, so Bayfield's seven kilometers away, and every little town has their own little rink. And uh, I remember my mom would take me in to do mom and tots, it was called. So in the middle of the day, we could go down there and jump on the ice, and it would be uh, me and my mom and then another guy um, who I ended up playing minor hockey with and his mom. So we'd be out there skating, half the lights were on, and just kind of go out for an hour, two hours at a time. As you probably figured out, like ice hockey is not the UK's national sport, but I'm just intrigued for s someone who grew up in Canada. Is it impossible in Canada just not to like ice hockey, basically? Uh, no, I think uh, in the large cities now, Toronto and Vancouver, there's a lot of uh, multinational kind of uh, people, so soccer and uh, baseball is becoming big. When you're in the big cities, there's all these different sports being played, but uh, when you're outside the big cities, it's really uh, ice hockey or not much. You know, we had some fastball in the summer and soccer, but it wasn't, uh, ice hockey was really what everyone was doing, all your friends were doing in school. So um, most of the people in school, the guys played hockey and then to a certain level at least. So everyone has a good understanding of the game. And just talk us through, because obviously playing ice hockey outdoors here is just unthinkable, really, unless you, you lay an ice rink. But obviously in, in Canada, you can play on ponds and stuff. Do you have memories of that? Yeah, uh, obviously the weather's warming up a bit, but uh, we had a little pond. We could walk across uh, the road into our neighbor's field, and there was a little pond uh, that would freeze over. Uh, so I remember shoveling that off and taking care of it, and we'd go over on a nice Saturday and kind of spend a day skating around. My sister was a figure skater. And my older brother played hockey, so uh, sometimes in the parks, public parks in the little towns, they'd have rinks. But uh, the big thing is there's just so many arenas. All the little towns have arenas. So as I said, if I drive 15 kilometers in four or five different directions, there's a hockey rink. So um, you can get on the ice uh, and you have more time on the ice. And, and they were pretty generous around me with letting the players come out and skate, you know, tuning a person or five bucks a head and we'd go skate around. Can you remember the time or, or, or the sort of age when you realized you, you wanted to be a hockey player and wanted to follow that career path? Uh, well, through public school, you know, you're dreaming of it and you're thinking about it, obviously. Uh, but I don't really remember speaking about it. Um, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? You'd say hockey player, sure, and pick another one, you know, an architect or something, you know, a lawyer or whatever, who, who makes money kind of thing. But uh, I was definitely always dreaming of it. Um, once I got to college, that's when uh, I was studying and my grades were good. And then it became, I started talking to NHL teams from the end of my freshman year. And it was like, uh, focus on getting good grades or this is also a profession that's available to you if, if things go well here. So that's when I really started uh, training like a professional and, and kind of thinking of it as a potential job. Well, how hard is that? That's a really good point, actually, that the dangle of, of playing in the best league in the world. But I guess at that time there was no guarantee that was ever going to happen. But countered that with, with getting yourself an education. That must have been a hard balance. Uh, a lot of players do it. Um, at Union College, where I went to school, it was the, the coaches wanted you have a 3.0, which is a B average. So uh, they really pushed good grades. And uh, I, was, I was into that because at that time I wasn't sure, hey, maybe I want to go to Wall Street. A lot of guys from the economics program went into New York City, Boston. But uh, as I said, once it became, there was NHL interest, it was, uh, what's the bigger payoff here? <laughs> if you get good grades or maybe put more focus into the games on the weekend and uh, NHL scouts are coming to watch you play so you're you're essentially in a job interview every weekend slightly inevitable question and I apologize but with the NHL you know just how was it to, to get that dream to to play in in what is the best league in the world yeah it was uh, it was pretty special uh, played my first game right at the end of my college season. So we played on a Thursday. We lost in the final four, Frozen Four, and then uh, I hopped in a car the next day. Uh, Ron Francis, Rod Brindamore were there, um, Jason Carmanos, 
and another guy. So they picked me up and drove me down to uh, Fort Lauderdale. Then the next night I played against the Florida Panthers. So uh, it just happened so quickly. And then that one was, was pretty special because uh, I signed the deal. I played the game and th there was time to sort of uh, enjoy it and all the messages from, from people uh, back home. Uh, rolled in, I sort of disappeared. I wasn't the OHL guy, I went to school and then all of a sudden they were like, dude, I saw you had played in the NHL, that's pretty cool. Like, I knew you were good, but I didn't know. That was in the cards, so that one was cool. And then after that, you're, you're kind of, you're there, but you want to stay there. So there was a few moments uh, when I was in Vancouver, I wasn't playing too much. I was on the fourth line. So once you get shut down, say halfway through the second, then I could kind of sit back and Datsuk and Zetterberg would be on the ice or you play against Yager or when you're warming up, you'd look down and there'd be Ovechkin and these kind of players. So um, that was the, the coolest part was being on the ice with those kind of uh, very, very world-class elite players. When you go up and down though, how is that emotional roller coaster with like NHL contracts dipping down to the HL and, and a bit of uncertainty? Is, is that an emotional roller coaster or do you just have to mentally know that that can happen? Yeah, that's, uh, well, it's, it's the American Hockey League's a grind, but it's a good grind because any day you could get a call or your coach can call you in and you get called up to the National Hockey League. So. Uh, if you haven't been there yet, obviously you're, you're waiting for it. But one of the hardest things is uh, when guys do get games. Like uh, I played there and I knew I could play there and I wanted to get back. So once you know you, you can stick and, and you, not that you belong there, but you can play in the league, then when you're back down, you realize, okay, it's not this far away dream. I could be there and then you're just... Uh, Things have to go right and timing has to go well. If you're playing well, someone gets injured. or uh, So one of the hardest things is, is after you've played when you go back down. And uh, sometimes they say it's easier to play in the NHL than it is to play in the American League. It's just a little bit of a cleaner game. and uh, so, so I think a lot of guys, when you come back down, it's pretty tough. It must be a funny, I'm just thinking now, hearing you talk, it must be a funny emotion because when you're in the AHL, you have a, a team goal, individual goals, because you want to win with that team. But I think you touched on it there. It's, it's also an audition. So it, it's, it's, it's more than one thing at a time, which must be a strange way to, to play. It, you kind of have to kind of cut out the fact that you're looking at the NHL and just concentrate on just being the best you can, I guess. Um, no, I, th I think... As far as the team stuff, in the American Hockey League, the, the team changes so much throughout the year. So it's not like in Europe where you have one team and it's together. Uh, my first year in Charlotte, it was a lockout year. So we finished with, I think, five guys we started the year with, um, with player movement and stuff. So there's not a whole lot of, uh, and no one really dreams of winning the Calder Cup, right? Everyone's in the American League to, to try to, to go up. So if you get on a run in the playoffs and guys are having fun, they'll keep playing. But there's not much financial reward to keep going into the playoffs. And most guys in that league are just trying to audition for the American League. So uh, you worry about your own game and uh, you need to be aware that people are watching. And, and because if you're not scoring points, they're still watching if you're finishing your hits or you're playing well defensively. So um, you do have to be aware people are watching everything you're doing out there. Uh, based on that answer, that's really interesting because we'll bring it to the present. That must be why it must be alien for yourself initially and other guys that come here because let's talk about the Elite League. As you now well know, pressure night in, night out to, to win matches because good old British have the, the league as the main thing rather than the playoffs. That is so different. And just listening to how you talk there, that is such a different mindset, isn't it, to perhaps what you've grown up used to? Uh, not that I grew up used to. Through, through junior and college, that was the ultimate team atmosphere. So, but a professional uh, level. Professionally, yeah. I didn't even enjoy it that much, that, that kind of atmosphere where in the American League, it really is every man for himself. And you have to be somewhat selfish, you know. Uh, but uh, I guess here you're focused on winning the games. And uh, in the American League, you would see, oh, like, there's, there's a scout list. You could walk out and see what scouts, what teams were in the building. So if your team wasn't going to call you up, everybody was just trying to impress somebody for their next contract. Um, so it is cutthroat like that, where here you're, you're on the team. Um, if the team does well, probably the guys will do well individually and uh, contracts for next year. 
Just talk about your time here. You, it's obviously, people know that you've come to have school here as well. Just how much was that important to you to, to have school and to, to be playing hockey at the same time? Yeah, that really was... Uh, I, I kind of decided to come do the school thing. And then uh, when I saw the video of the rink and when I started to kind of talk to people, I was then excited about the ice hockey aspect. So um, I was in Krefeld, the DEL, and COVID hit. Um, and I had a down year, so I was probably not going to get a deal in the DL anyway. And then just, uh, I didn't figure there'd be much money in Europe and who knew what would happen. So it was just time for me to, uh, turn my brain on and, and think about other things and sort of, uh, explore what's out there, start, start thinking about the future. Um, and it's been awesome for that aspect, just kind of thinking about other things. It, it does, uh, it's made hockey a lot more enjoyable, I think, when I, when I do show up. It's, it's a little more light and, and fun for me, yeah. Must be hard work, though. Before the cameras started running, we talked about you getting your assignments in. You've, you've got to put late hours from that. I guess I was going to say, is it a bind? Is it a bind to juggle? But as you say, it sounds like you put in the hard work. And, and, and I, you know, I must say, you can see you enjoying your hockey on the ice at the moment. You know, so hockey is kind of a, a fun part of, of your journey at the moment. Yeah. Well, you don't have to be put in late hours. Uh, I did that to myself. So <laughs> if, uh, time management, uh, I don't really think it's... Uh, so about every fifth week, I'll have a paper due. So last night, a 4,000 word paper. But... Uh, if I worked on it each day, but the, the reality is the mental grind, physically you're tired, but uh, we have the time in the afternoon. So um, even yesterday when I was scrambling to finish, it was kind of like, this is exciting because we got home late from Glasgow. I'd be sitting around grocery shop, walk around aimlessly. So it's, it's really nice to have something to, uh, to totally switch your brain onto and then turn it back on when you come to the rink. What's the aim of this of this course? Do you have a vision for where you'd want to be post hockey? Uh, no, that's a, a general vision, or uh, it was more an exploration in, in trying to sort out that question. Uh, what I would like to do, and uh, you know, with the NBA, we're exploring different uh, areas of business and marketing, finance, entrepreneurship. <coughs> Every five weeks, we do a different module, so. It's sort of a crash course on, on different areas and uh, trying to see what interests me, I guess, and uh, talk to the people that are in the course, see what they're up to, just sort of uh, get a better understanding of what's going on uh, out there in the world. Just before we finish, I want to pick your brains on behalf of, of young people watching this and especially young hockey players. British players who, who want to, to make the game, who, who you know, they'll look up to you and see that all that you've done. If you've got like a few one bit or a few bits of advice to them, you know, at a young age, what would that be? What, what would be the key to them following in, in the footsteps of, of, let's say, Ollie Betteridge or David Clark, Matthew Myers, people who have been huge successes here, Jordan Kelsall. What would be your advice to, to those players and those youngsters to, to, make, to make hockey a success for them? Yeah. It's hard to speak for those guys growing up in England versus yeah. growing up in uh, But in terms Ontario. of maybe their attitude. Attitude, yeah. Well, I think the most important thing is you have to play hockey a lot. Like, uh, that's why I think Canada has a lot of world-class players is uh, we grow up, we're always playing, you're always doing reps and stuff. So just doing skills and skating around isn't really going to get your hockey brain up, up to par. And uh, you can see it in some of the other European countries too where the skills are there but the hockey sense isn't there. So... I think you have to play a lot, like informal games, pick up games, play with kids. Uh, for me, I think the biggest thing was, uh, I, I think I, my junior coach, Al Kimmel, told me, or I figured it out myself, was um, when you see other players, it's, to get to the level for those English guys, they have to be one of the best players from their town, then they have to be one of the top, top players in the country. So. Uh, if you want to go further than the other players you're playing with, you have to do more and work harder than they are. You, you can't just do the same thing and think, uh, oh, I'm better than he is right now, therefore in five years I'm going to be better than him. I, I think to, to, to go further, you have to do more than the other kids. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Joe. Oh, thanks.